Amazon Web Services has been a part of our reality for a while and is only getting bigger and the ability to program and automate things is really important. Not only automating your infrastructure, but also being able to access data in things like S3 are very important. To that end, we're going to spend a couple of videos and go over the Python Bodo 3 library that is used to access Amazon services. These aren't going to be extensive, all-encompassing tutorials, but this is going to be enough to get you started and understanding how to use the Bodo 3 library. To that end, if we'll open up the docs, it's actually it's super simple to install the Bodo library. You just do a pip install Bodo 3, and you can even specify the version. So we'll jump into command line. We can actually do a pip install Bodo 3, and it goes through and does an install. The next step, though, is that we need to figure out how we want to do authentication with the API for Amazon Web Services. Using the Bodo 3 library, there are eight ways of dealing with credentials. You can pass credentials as parameters into the instantiation of the client, the session, you can use environment variables, you can use a shared config file, and a bunch of different ways. In production, I generally do environment variables, but locally I use a shared credentials file We'll look at actually using that if we'll open up in our home directory we'll do .aws to access the hidden directory and then we'll do the credentials file open that up in vim. Note we have default at the very top this is the default configuration we have aws access key id and then aws secret access key. You'll just put that information that you get from the aws console in here and you're ready to go to start using the bodo3 library because it'll automatically pick it up. So with that in mind, let's actually take a look at a little bit of documentation for Bodo 3. If we go over to the main page and go over to available services, you get a giant list of everything that's available with Bodo 3. Basically, everything that you can do on Amazon has some sort of thing that you can do with it through the Bodo 3 library. If you just take a quick look through here, you have CloudFormation, CloudFront, CloudWatch. Config service, directory service, DynamoDB, EC2, ECS, EF, Elastic Cache, Elastic Beanstalk, Glacier. You can do just about anything on Amazon using the Bodo3 library with Python. The frustrating part about that is since there's so much that you can do, in the past it's been kind of difficult to figure out how to get access to that information. Fortunately, with Bodo3, they've come out with a better object oriented way of accessing the things that you need to access. And they do that through resources. So in this quick little example you'll see they have SQS, you do bodo3.resource and you pass the string SQS. This returns an SQS session object that you can then use to do SQS stuff. Same thing with S3. And you can do all sorts of things, all the basic things that you need to get done. And to see more of what those are I really recommend you look at the documentation. Another thing that is good to know over these resources is the actions that are available with these resource objects. In this case, you can, with the SQS message system, you can do receive message. You can loop through messages and delete them. And then with like S3 objects, you get the actual object of a file out of S3 and you can do stuff with that and all kinds of different things so you can not only use resource to get information from the servers, but then you have actions of things that you can do once you have that object and that information from the AWS server. There are more things available in, this, in the system. There's re references, sub-resources, waiters, multi-threading, and a lot more advanced stuff that we're not going to go into. This is just a good intro in how to start using the Bodo3 library. So if we look at our management console, you can see there's nothing in our GoDjango Playground bucket on Amazon S3. To give an example of how this resources stuff works and how to basically upload a file with S3, then we're going to do that next. In the next video, we're going to go over into more details about dealing with and doing stuff with S3, since that's going to be a really common thing that we might do in Django. So we'll open up our IPython, we'll do an import Boto3. Then we'll do our s3 equals boto3.resource and we pass in the string of s3 so we get our s3 resource object and you can see here we have a service resource. 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually open a file that we want to upload. So doing data equals open, I am a test.txt. We're going to read it in. And then now we want to actually upload that. So now we're going to do s3.bucket. We're going to pass the string name of the bucket that we want to access. In this case, go Django pl Playground. Then we want to do an action of put object. We're going to put the object, we're going to do the key of test.txt. This is actually going to be the name that it's going to give it in the management console. And then we're going to do body equals data. This means it's going to pass in all that information and go ahead and upload it. If you compare it with Bodo 3 versus previous versions of Bodo, this is a lot easier than it used to be. So now if we'll simply go back into our browser, look at our S3 management console, refresh it, you can see test.txt is there and it was successfully uploaded. So really that's it, that's all there really is to using the concepts behind the Bodo library. If you'll join us for the next video, we'll do a few more things with the S3 resource of the Bodo library and you'll get a little better understanding of what all is going on.